Okay, let's move over to the education sector, Chukudi. Yasu decries federal government's indifference to the education sector. Now, academic staff union of universities has decried the indifference exhibited by the federal government to the university system of the country amidst other issues currently bedeviling the country's polity. Now, we know that um, they addressed journalists yesterday in Calabar Cross River State. At the end of the National Executive Council meeting of ASU, its president, Mr. Biodu Ogunyemi, said they were angry with the current position of the federal government on education because it has shown less concern to the growth of the system. Ogunyemi said the federal government was not interested in the growth and the development of the education sector because from the budgetary allocation, which was 11% in 2015, is now a little over above 7% in 2018. So are we going down, Thank really? You. You know, now, we know that in Kaduna State, that's one state that even does better. Kaduna is not. Kaduna is the only state. The only state that, in Nigeria, that has been consistent yes. with double figures. I think now they are doing about thirteen percent. And even at, even at that, it is very far from the standard. The standard is twenty six percent. So even if you are doing thirteen percent, you are still doing half of what the standard is. But let me paint a picture. When you hear Ofo Wiri. I'm, I'm sorry, you don't know. Okay, let me. Okay, I will play the two. When you hear Ofo Were, when you hear Ila, Allah Sekbo, you know, we have Ofe, we have Ila, we have Ofo Were, and we have Ila, Allah Sekbo. When you hear Ofo Were, you know what to expect because Ofo Were is not whether you can cook, Ofo Were is your budget. Mm -hmm. When you hear Ila, Allah Sekbo, it's not whether you can cook. Coming. Hey, it's your budget. Mm -hmm. Now, look at the educational sector in Nigeria. I always insist that there are two classes of Nigerians. I don't care what anybody thinks about it. The political class that benefits from the largesse of government and the suffering masses of the people. We say education is the bedrock of a nation's existence. Do you know what a lot of these people do? They supplant the educational sector so that you are not able to think and open your eyes to question. Because, I mean, my dad will tell you in the past, when we have this discussion and you just go, oh, I'm tired of this country. This country is so frustrating. My dad will say, no, don't ever say that. Don't confess negativity with your mouth. By the grace of God, you know, my elder ones packaged small honeymoon after so many years of marriage for my parents, and they went to Dubai. Just Dubai here, yeah, Dubai here. Yeah. And my dad came back, and he was the first one to tell me, as a young man, you need to do a lot more for your country. Do you know why? There is order. You cannot even jump the queue. If you jump the queue, it's madness. Do you know that there are, there are parts of the world where if you jump the queue, they know you are not okay. They know you are from Nigeria, first of all, because hey. we are always in a hurry. We don't want to... We are the ones that we enter one way. We are the ones that will do the things. And the funny thing, unfortunately, Chikudi, is that when we travel abroad, when we go to places where there is order, we end up behaving ourselves. Mm. But we come back home to Nigeria. The things you can't do when you go to London, you come back to Nigeria, you do Perfect it scenario. A friend of mine who is African saw a sign, and the person was shocked. Mashe to, CB. Do not urinate here. The person was surprised that, you know... Somebody will just wake up. You have to even put a sign to tell you, people. No, no, that somebody will just wake up. Look at the beautiful design. Like, oh, you know, do the natural. We know nature does not have any respect, and he, and he can call you anytime. But he was really very surprised that, ah, ah, how do we get to this? So sometimes when the person looks at you, the person is like, ah, are these people okay? Are they normal? There are certain parts of the world you go to, and you tell them that your budget for education is 7%. They will look at you and wonder. Now, this is really very, very sad because in 2015, it was 11.75. If we convert 12%, are we going forward or going backwards? If in 2018, it is a little over 7%. And to think that our population, we're like, we have the highest number of out-of-school children exactly. in, in the world. And we're still doing this. And we live in a country where, I'm going to tell you the truth, eh? ignorance is a major problem. Aside from the fact that people who know Take advantage to exploit us. Ignorance is a major problem. Oh, you go to church or you go to Asalatu and give testimony that you have built a house and God has saved you from the wickedness of landlords and landladies. And in basic social studies, we are taught that there are three basic necessities of life. Food, clothing, and shelter. In other climes, these things are normal. But here, and we, and we have said this severally in this country, if you have life for 24 hours, you begin to say, ah, 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 ah. Let these people not let this thing spoil you. Or if you, you, if you come home and say, ah, have we had life since morning? They'll say, yes, ah, then no one will use this life sleep. We have begun to form a particular mindset and identity for ourselves, thinking that it can never work or it will not work. And it's yeah. as a result of people who believe that if you are, if you become informed, 
you're going to question what they do. It's this mediocre attitude, Chukudi, this very mediocre attitude. And someone said something so valid the other day. The person said that even when, as Nigerians, we say things like, I can't come and kill myself, we don't realize what we are subconsciously doing to ourselves. We are literally building up on our mediocre attitude. Exactly. And that is why everything around us is of mediocre standard. Very true. And that is why people make excuses. Ah, this our, if we even go out to vote, say, mm. we leak out. Oh, they have been doing budget since 1999 now. What have we seen? I mean, two days ago, Leila and I went to, when we went to register for our PVC, the taxi guy that brought us back kept saying, oh, Auntie Nobito to get PVC, who are going to vote? And God is, so we had to literally convince him on why he needed to go to prison. Thank you very prison. much. So we are weaponizing, we're basically using that the ignorance, the illiteracy, the poverty, we've weaponized We're well, weaponizing poverty and literally it's just mass destruction. Now, what we must do as a people is try as much as we can to leverage on our strengths. Each one, tell one. The little you know, share and pass the information. Let people understand that you have a voice and your voice collectively is a powerful tool for the life of me, I just... Sometimes when we look at ourselves and look at the educational sector, we wonder how... So you, then you begin to say it's God's grace. Because if in the past... I recall, you know, receiving lectures in the theatres in the University of Nigeria, and our lecturer would say, ah, in the good old days, we were, we were two in a room. In the good old days, you know, they used to do our laundry. We used to have chicken. We used to have ice cream. And I was shocked. Do you know why? We failed to plan for the future. Agreed, in the good old days, the population. On Community You Report yesterday, we discussed the educational sector and the plans by the Lagos State government to recruit additional 1,000 teachers to the 1,200 already. And somebody called and mentioned Bagada Junior, Bagada Junior Secondary School and said that the parents contribute, is it Bagada or Baptist? I don't want to make a mistake. I'm sorry, I don't want to make a mistake. Yeah, one of the schools. One of those schools. Somebody mentioned that in a class, you have up to 90 pupils in a class. Do you know what the minimum standard, the, the maximum standard is in UNESCO? It should not be more than 35. In a class, you would have up to 90 pupils in a class. When we fail to plan, mm. we begin to put ourselves in a difficult situation. Now, ASU has come out to identify the problem. I would want ASU to put the word out there so that we can continue to pressurize the government. And this is not the government of President Mahmoud Dubari because government exists in continuum. You consolidate on the gains of the this previous government. This is about government. Nigeria's governance. Thank At you very much. At the end much. of the day, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. It's a bit scary because Nigeria's population by 2050 is going to be at 400 million people, and that's going to be the third highest in the world, and I really just wonder... Before you go to the next story, just imagine mm. this. We are 198 million, and we are faced with this situation. By 2050, mm. we would be around 400 million. Just imagine how difficult life will be if we fail to plan now. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.